Welcome back. Now in this last part of our discourse um, on um, preparation of alcohols, just before we move on to see the reactions that alcohols undergo, I'll look at preparation of alcohols from alkyl halides as well as from carbohydrates. When alcohols are to be prepared from alkyl halides, first, what are alkyl halides? They are compounds of formula Rx. What you need to do to the alkyl halide is hydrolyze it. So the reaction involves hydrolysis of an alkyl halide. And when an alkyl halide undergoes hydrolysis, an OH group is introduced to knock off the halogen, the X of your alkyl halide. And that means you are going to get ROH. So that is somewhat a kind of a um, substitution reaction. Yeah, it is substitution because X has been eliminated and OH has been added. So that's a substitution reaction, no doubt. But the question now is, what can we use to hydrolyze an alkyl halide? What options do we have as per reagent? The alkyl halide could be hydrolyzed using um, caustic soda, sodium hydroxide. We could also use potassium hydroxide and then we could use um, silver hydroxide. Any of these three hydroxides could be used. Now interestingly, this resembles a reaction we saw under preparation of alkenes. Under preparation of alkenes, we saw a reaction called dehydrohalogenation. In which case we said, if you have Rx, and that Rx were to undergo dehydrohalogenation, that it would have to react with potassium hydroxide, but in the presence of ethanol. If you have potassium hydroxide and ethanol reacting with this guy, what takes place is not a substitution reaction, but an elimination reaction. And that elimination will give you an alkene. But if Rx is reacting with potassium hydroxide alone, then what takes place is not elimination this time, but substitution. So the X goes away and is replaced by OH. This doesn't concern us for now, but that does. So under exam conditions, let's see on question 21, I'm given C2H5Br reacting with KOH, no ethanol present. It means that what is going to take place here is substitution. I'll simply remove the BR and replace it with OH. And that means my product will be C2H5OH. And that is an alkanol. So alkanols can be prepared by hydrolysis of as, I'm sorry, um, alkyl halide. So that's an alkyl halide and it has been hydrolyzed to give an alkanol. Now this is a pretty simple way of making alcohols. What is more detailed and more important and accounts for um, the, the, the generation of a large proportion of the alcohol consumed by man is what we are going to now preparation of alcohols from carbohydrates. As a matter of fact, it is one of the oldest ways of making alcohols that has stood the test of time. So moving on to this side, we have um, preparation of alkanols from carbohydrates. Now first, palm wine. Palm wine contains sugar and that's why fresh palm wine is sweet. But when palm wine stands for some time, say days, what happens? There is fermentation. And this fermentation involves the enzymatic breakdown of the sugar that is present in this palm wine into ethanol. So yes, by enzymes, by enzymatic action, sugars can be broken down into ethanol and carbon dioxide. That occurs in palm wine typically when you allow it stand for days. But interestingly, when palm wine stands for days, the sequence of events that will take place is as follows. You have the sugar, 
that will be broken down by enzymes into alcohol, precisely ethanol, and then this ethanol by aerial oxidation will be converted into ethanoic acid. So which means fresh palm wine that is sweet because it contains sugar will begin to taste sour after days of standing. Why? Because the sugar in it would have been oxidized into or fermented and then oxidized into ethanoic acid. So the sour taste of palm wine that has stood for days is not due to ethanol but due to ethanoic acid. Not only that, that palm wine that has stood for days and is now sour in taste is called sour wine. If you don't call it sour wine, you call it vinegar. So you must have told or you must have been told from all levels that vinegar or sour wine is a source of ethanoic acid, a natural source, yes. So palm wine, when it stands for days, will undergo conversion into ethanol. The sugar in it becomes ethanol. And this can be represented in equations as C6H12O6 in the presence of an enzyme called zymase. This zymase, just like a maltase, is an enzyme found in yeast. So in yeast you have zymase. And zymase is able to convert the simple sugars that you have in palm wine into ethanol plus CO2. So ethanol and CO2 are the products we get when the sugar in palm wine is acted upon by the enzyme zymase. Now apart from palm wine, which other carbohydrate sources do we have for getting alcohols, ethanol precisely? A second option would be to prepare your ethanol from molasses. Molasses is a byproduct from the sugar industry. In the preparation of um, sucrose in industry, a syrupy byproduct that we obtain is called molasses. So it means therefore that in molasses there will be some quantity of sucrose. So when you see in the textbook that preparation of ethanol is starting with molasses, it means in effect that you are preparing your ethanol from sucrose. And that's why when we write the equations, we usually start with C12H22O11, and that's sucrose. So when sucrose is broken down enzymatically, we get C6H12O6, that's glucose, plus another C6H12O6, and that's fructose. So from basics, we know that sucrose is made up of glucose and fructose. So we get those two when we hydrolyze sucrose. This hydrolysis is also enzymatic. It is carried out by an enzyme called invertase. So invertase is the enzyme that breaks down invert sugar, breaks down sucrose into glucose and fructose. Now, in a second step, the glucose, C6H12O6, which is the product of hydrolysis of a disaccharide, will then be broken down by the usual enzyme, which is zymase, to give ethanol, like we saw in the case of palm wine, plus CO2. So again, we have prepared ethanol, and the ethanol is coming from glucose by the action of zymase. But was glucose our starting material? No, our starting material was sucrose in the form of molasses. So here we have a two-step reaction just because we started with a disaccharide. Now finally, it is possible for us to start this preparation of ethanol using starch. Starch. So you can have starchy raw materials such as grains. Many grains are rich in starch. So when you have those grains that are rich in starch and you're using them to prepare ethanol, the yield is usually um, high and um, they seem to be the commonest of the three used for preparing ethanol. So that ethanol is otherwise called grain alcohol. 
We call it grain alcohol for that reason. So come in here now. Come in here. See what we have. C6 H10O5. That is the formula for all polysaccharides, including starch. So we write that. We enclose it in a bracket and put an N outside. Starch can be hydrolyzed by an enzyme called diastase. This diastase is present in malt. So malt contains this enzyme, which can break down starch into C12, H22, O11. That's a disaccharide. And that disaccharide is called maltose. So maltose is obtained from starch by hydrolysis of starch by the enzyme diastase. Now what happens next is maltose C12 H22O11 will be broken down by its own enzyme maltase which I already said is present in yeast along with zymase. So maltase breaks down maltose into glucose. Remember that from basics we say maltose is a disaccharide made up of two units of which monosaccharide glucose. So this is maltose and that's glucose. And of course from here I know that you may be able to figure out already that glucose will be broken down by its own enzyme, zymase. So zymase is the enzyme specific for glucose. And when it breaks down this glucose we get C2H5OH plus CO2. So this is ethanol that we have prepared again. So to get ethanol from carbohydrates, first you could get your ethanol from palm wine, just let it stand as it stands, zymase does its work. Or you get ethanol from molasses, in that case you'd have to hydrolyze the um, sucrose first by invertase to give you monosaccharides and then the monosaccharides can be acted upon by zymase to give you your ethanol and then on this side we see preparation of ethanol from starch we said in that case there will be three steps first the hydrolysis of starch to maltose that's by diastase present in malt and then the hydrolysis of maltose by maltase present in um, yeast and in that case you get glucose as product so that the glucose can then be acted upon by zymase to give ethanol so we're done preparing alcohols. The next big question before us is, what reactions do alcohols undergo? And I'll tell you that the answer is many reactions. We'll begin to look at these many reactions in the next set of alcohol videos. Now, um, I would have told you from the beginning, I was supposed to have told you from the beginning of um, our consideration of alcohols, that the journey would be a bit lengthy, that we would have plenty to talk about for alcohols, because alcohols appear to be a very important set of organic compounds. Their reactions lead you everywhere. You can practically prepare different kinds of organic compounds from alcohols or prepare alcohols from different kinds of organic compounds. For example, um, in our preparatory methods, I didn't tell us about preparation of alcohols from amines. It's possible that you have an amine and you react it with um, dioxonitrate 3-acid and you get an alcohol. There are many reactions that give alcohols, but of course, we can't study all of them and that's why we selected these ones according to your syllabus. So in the next set of videos, I'll be talking about the reactions that alcohols undergo. I'll see you in that video.